Well, you may want to hold those applause because, I mean, I'm probably going to be a total bust and then you're going to be like, ah, that guy. <laughs> so, well, imagine the list of things you can do in the site. Think about how that list keeps on changing over time, making you better, powerful, more efficient. Somebody invented the map so you could look up routes and places whenever you drive. Maybe something is wrong with my microphone, I don't know. Say so that's one of those things that got to be a little bit tweaked to be more powerful, I guess. Now we have a phone with GPS capabilities, right? Simplifying that map task and it auto guides you along your trip. Somebody invented credit cards that simplified shopping experience so you don't have to spend time looking for cash. Then we have mobile pay, right? That streamlined that experience and pretty much eliminates a dependency on wallets. I don't even have to have a wallet. I remember I was running in Singapore doing my seven miles. I saw a ferry, I got a passport right here, tap, two hours later, I was in the jungle. See, pretty easy. Now guess what? There is another item on that list. Now you get to call the shots by submitting your prices with instant results for what you want to buy, eliminating any price haggling. So no more negotiations, which is actually pretty powerful because think about this. How many hours have you spent negotiating at a dealership? Last time you bought a new car. Did you find that process enjoyable? Now granted, if you do get a good deal, at least that part feels uplifting, right? Yeah. Well, that's the common denominator. You see, most people don't like negotiations, yet they love the benefits that may come as a result of negotiations. Well then, would not that be fantastic if we can find a way to empower people to rip the benefits of negotiations without them actually negotiating and do so instantly? You see, that's the key, instantly. That would be pretty powerful, and uh, my team and I, we think so, so we invented the entire infrastructure, currently applied to the automotive industry to materialize this once. And in the process, we focused on the consumer empowerment, rather than convenience, which is still present as a byproduct of our innovation. So that's pretty powerful, you get another item on that list where you get to Place transactions on your own terms. Pretty much as if you negotiated, except you didn't. That's pretty powerful. But how do we get to the promised land? How do we put people in the driver's seat to get them to place transactions on their terms? While sustaining that dynamic over the long term, well, we have to start with the supply side and then reconcile it with the demand side. To illustrate the challenge and its solution, I'm going to use an example from the automotive industry. So businesses make educated projections of their profit maximizing level or levels, if you talk about many companies, of output based on a number of variables such as the market price, competitive landscape, input costs, and a whole bunch of other variables, observed and unobserved. Now, given constant market fluctuations, right, and inherently inaccurate projections, businesses have to react on the fly to all these dynamic forces. And they do so by measuring their inventory fluctuations, which kind of makes sense. So if you're in business to sell certain goods, like Kendra, she had a retail store, so you look at your inventory. If it's going up, that means the rate of inventory replenishment is actually exceeding what you are able to sell. Well, guess what? I mean, you have to move that inventory build up. What do you do? You lower the price, right? Makes sense, yeah. So, of course, the opposite would be true. If inventory contracts, you raise the price. In the automotive world, dealers are closely paying attention to what's called inventory turnover metric. Now what it is, is just the number of days it takes a dealer to sell their cars on the lot. Okay, so it's pretty simple. 
So if Adila targets a 60-day inventory turnover rate and they see it slowing down, so that means they cannot sell cars, they keep getting you know, those deliveries, but they are not selling them. So what do they do? Well, it's a pretty clear signal to lower the price, right? I mean, they are not in business to store their cars, right? They are not museums. Makes sense, right? Yeah. So uh, they lower the price. Now, of course, if they see that metric accelerating, such as, let's say, 30 days, 20 days, okay, well, they raise the price. Now, why does it matter to us? Well, let's examine this seesaw dynamic like I said, using the automotive industry that many of you will find familiar based on your most recent experiences. So COVID hit automotive industry pretty hard where the initial economic uncertainty caused consumers to cut back on a number of their expenditures, including new cars. So you look outside, you see full lots, right? I mean, those cars were everywhere about a year ago. Well, dealers had to react. They look at their inventory turnover rate and they see it slowing down to like 90 days, 100 days, 120 days. They offered massive, massive discounts, right? Now, in response, automotive industry or automakers, well, they halted some of their production because their profit margins are now lower, right? So they halted some of their production and canceled a number of orders, including chips. Now, as we know, economy rebounded much faster than these automakers anticipated, catching them off guard. All of a sudden, they rushed back to their factories trying to jack up their production. Well, unfortunately, they realized they needed chips, right? Well, <laughs> they went back to chip makers. Those chip makers had to survive all that time, so they replaced canceled orders with some other industries, right? They're not gonna wait for a miracle for these guys to come back to them, so they have laptop producers, tech gadgets producers, right? All other industries who were jumping into that now empty spot were automakers, well, lost their seat pretty much at the line. And so with fewer chips, they couldn't actually produce as many cars. And guess what? Now they cannot get those cars to dealers. Dealers now, keep in mind, are facing surging demand, right? That's how the economy rebounded. So that means demand is actually going up. Well, <laughs> that means that if a dealer is looking at their inventory turnover rate, they would actually see it accelerating. 30 days, 20 days, I mean, you are selling those cars, nothing is coming in, what's happening? High prices, right? And that's exactly what happened. I mean, now you look and you see empty lots, sky high prices. Now check this out, in a matter of 15 months, we went from full lots, right? And massive discounts to empty lots and sky high prices. Now there's big swings, okay? Could have been avoided or at least partially, partially mitigated with a smooth consumption as well as proper demand to supply matching. Now, why does it matter to us? Well, here's why it matters to you. If we solve this static inventory problem, we get to empower you to name your prices with instant results and help sellers clear their inventory. Now, within this platform, we have to make sure that we have the environment where different prices can coexist which means that each transaction is independent, so no pricing information from previous transaction is getting carried over to a new transaction to make sure that we do not disrupt sellers' ongoing sticker sales. So in this environment, sellers get to clear as much of their inventory at high sticker prices and then anonymously list the remainder of their inventory. See, that's the key, where each match for those anonymous listings are going to be actual buyers, committed buyers, not a list of dead-end leads that they still have to close. It means we have transactions all of a sudden. Instead of somebody calling you, I'm talking about a dealer, trying to get you to go to their dealership, right? And somehow close you over there. And this environment gets buyers access to deals they wouldn't have otherwise, you see? And we know people love deals. I mean, I love deals. I'm pretty sure most of you love deals as well. Exactly, see, I love that. That's exactly right. I mean, deals and instant deals are pretty good. Now, to facilitate the flow of these transactions, we need to have a reliable method that properly ma matches or maps buyer price bids with seller offers. And it has to do it instantly. And this is what's called demand to supply matching process. To illustrate this rather complicated model, let me give you another example that's fairly intuitive. So let's say you want to buy a car that's available across 1,000 dealers, and each dealer has 10 identical cars. 
So by placing the price bid, you're effectively negotiating across 10,000 cars in parallel, as if it's actually possible for you to negotiate with the first dealer on their first car. And then at the conclusion of a failed negotiation, you, you then exit and re-enter de the dealership as if it's actually possible for you to start a fresh round of negotiations on their second car. The dealer would be like, oh, you again, you know, so the second transaction is likely to fall apart <laughs> as well as the first one, right? Yet, we build a platform where these independent iterations are actually possible. So by placing a price, a price bid, you are negotiating across 10,000 cars in parallel. Now, add more buyers, and you have our model where we rank buyers and dealers going through iterations to derive the highest ranking pair to determine a successful match. And then we keep looping through this process mathematically to determine the next highest ranking pair to identify a subsequent match. I mean, that's truly a live exchange of sellers anonymously listing their inventory and buyers keep price bidding. All is happening simultaneously in real time. Now, if you love deals, this platform is what you've been waiting for all along. It's a hassle-free power tool that helps buyers save or essentially, like I said initially, reap the benefits of negotiations without you actually negotiating whenever, wherever. Now look, COVID caused lots of lots of market and life adjustments. People put a great value in their time now. Companies recognize this trend, they digitalize their platforms. Yet a digitalized environment is nothing new. It's already been implemented in the 90s when end-to-end -end online sales became a norm. That's why we have internet, right? That's why Amazon came in the 90s. See, my team and I, we want to go further. We want to empower people to place transactions on their terms, essentially flipping the whole commerce 180 degrees on its axis. Yet we are realistic, and we want to make sure, and we build a platform to be sustainable. Why? Because it helps businesses increase profitability. At the end of the day, if we can match more buyers and sellers at their desired prices without disrupting sellers' ongoing transactions and help to remove or at least minimize search and transaction costs, then both buyers and sellers win. See, that's it. That's where I drop my microphone. Bam. <laughs> All right, you guys have been amazing, you know. See, I'm like a DJ, you know, people on the back, you know, let me see those phones up. <laughs>